Before I get down to all the things that you need to do before you fly with your pet, I'd like to put it out there that I flew with one pet, a cat, uh, on Air India. My flight was from Bombay to Kochi. Uh, it's a two-hour flight and uh, it was an evening flight, which is to say 4.30 to 6.30. Now that that's out of the way, let's get down to the actual step. Step one, definitely visit your vet. Inform them that you are intending to fly with your cat. The most important thing that you'll need from your vet is a health certificate, a fit to fly certificate. This certificate cannot be more than 24 hours old. If you have figured out when you're going to fly, do mention the date so that your doctor is aware um, when this certificate will be required to be released. All vaccines have to be up to date. And by up to date, I mean that the last time your cat has been vaccinated has to be more than a month or less than a year. This means that if you are not updated, you cannot vaccinate your cat today and expect to fly, say, within the next week. You can only fly a month after the last vaccine has been done. So typically, you will have a booklet that uh, tells you when the, your cat has been last vaccinated. While you're at the vets, weigh your pet. Oh, that rhymed. <laughs> so if your cat is under 5 kilos, um, there is a chance that you could carry them with you in cabin. The cat plus the carrier has to be under 5 kilos for you to be able to do that. So if your cat is borderline, uh, it's most likely that they're going to go into cargo hold. Now, there are two separate airline carriers that, you, that uh, come into play. Step two, get an airline approved carrier. So you weighed your cat, he or she is under 5 kilos and you're pretty sure that it plus the carrier is going to be under 5 kilos. Congratulations, you will be able to take your cat in cabin with you. You will need to get an airline approved carrier. These are very easily available on Amazon. I will put a link in the description of the one that I got. My cat is 3.6 kilos. Again, I'm reiterating this. She's really tiny. So my uh, carrier looks something like this. The base is removable and it's sturdy so that it holds shape and it comes with this Velcro attached fabric. It looks kind of like a rug. Uh, but even with this, I kept uh, an extra towel as a base which is mandatory by the way you have to keep an absorbent material on the base of the carrier the carrier has to be within the parameters of 18 inches by 18 inches by 12 inches these dimensions are important especially the 12 inches bit which is the height of the carrier uh, this will make sure that you are able to slide the bag under the seat in front of you your only two options when you're in the flight is to keep the bag on your lap or keep the bag under the seat in front of you, which is most likely going to be the case, especially when uh, during takeoff and landing. Now, if your pet plus the carrier is going to be more than five kilos, you do not need an airline approved carrier. Your regular plastic sturdy carrier that you carry your cat in when you go to the wet is going to work just fine um, because it's going to go into cargo hold and the this kind of this kind of bag is not going to cut it when it goes into cargo hold so you definitely need your regular plastic carrier um, if in case your cat is going to go on ahead into the cargo hold step three inform the airline having said this I did not actually inform the carrier because I was told that it's not required. You just uh, need to show up with your cat. Now I'll tell you why this was an issue in my case. The same flight that I was traveling in, there was another couple also traveling with a cat. Per flight, only two pets are allowed to fly. 
if by any chance there is going to be another or more than two pets in a flight there is a likelihood that you will be not allowed to fly you do not want that to happen trust me nothing can be more heartbreaking than that uh, i was very lucky that there was only one other set of passengers who were carrying just one other pet so we had reached the maximum quota for our flight but thank god nobody else decided to fly that day with their pet you do not want to take that chance so you might have to figure out a way to inform the airline that you're carrying a pet with you what this will do is uh, sort of put it on record that you have already booked a ticket and you are flying with a pet and you have informed the airline so you have taken a first come first serve one spot for your pet step 4 the day of travel so it's finally the day that you're traveling hopefully you have your health certificate which is less than 24 hours old on you i was advised not to uh, go more than 2 and a half hours prior to my flight and i'll get to why that is the case once you get to the airport you go to check in your uh, baggage ideally you are expected not to carry any other um, cabin baggage but i since i had a laptop that i needed to carry i made sure that i had just one other bag it was a handbag that could carry my laptop and all the essentials i carried a baggie of food very little just enough um and a small bottle of water for tofu my cat as soon as i got to the check in desk i informed them that hey i'm traveling with a cat i need uh, to get an excess baggage tag so your pet is technically excess baggage uh they are going to weigh your pet and this is where the whole 5 kilos thing comes into play my pet with the carrier was 4 kilos you have to pay excess baggage according to whatever the rates are at that point uh when i was traveling it was 500 bucks per kg so with 4 kgs i had to pay 2000 for her plus taxes you get and you get um there she is <laughs> you get an excess baggage uh, receipt and then you are informed that you have to wait for captain approval now this is important this is a formality and um, it it's just something that needs to be done what this entails is that you have to wait near the check in desk your baggage is marked and kept aside and you will be asked to wait until the captain of your flight is informed what this means is that usually your flight is uh, in air when you're checking in which means the pilot cannot be contacted or your pilot hasn't yet reached uh, the airport for your onward flight either way uh, this means that there is a bit of a wait for you um make sure you keep track of time uh one hour prior to your boarding uh make sure that you're going to the desk and you know making them aware that hey i'm waiting for the approval you know do your thing my situation was a bit tricky because even after my flight had landed my uh the airline officials were not able to contact uh the captain until the very last minute so my flight was at 4:30 and un- even up until 3:45 i was still waiting for the approval things were getting a little heated so uh this was my specific experience this is why i'm telling you make sure you're there at least an hour before boarding starts uh at the desk to make sure that you know hey we're waiting please let us know if we can go through usually you get the approval it's just a matter of them being able to contact the captain in time uh once you get the approval you can go through uh security check in the reason why uh it does not make sense to go more than 2 and a half hours before you fly is exactly because of this uh you cannot go through to security without captain approval so if you go too early you're going to end up waiting way more than you absolutely need to and especially with a pet that is not something that you want to do so 
make sure you time your entry into the airport uh, in such a way that you do not have to wait longer than necessary. Step 5. Security check-in. So here I was rushing through to get to security check-in. Lucky for me, I was traveling at such a time. The security check-in in T2 International Airport in Mumbai was absolutely deserted. So I did not have to wait. But what you need to do, and this is important again, take out your laptop if you have one, put it in the tray, put it uh, in the belt, put any other bag that you might have in the belt as an absolute last thing. You take your pet out of its carrier, you put the bag into the belt, you step forward in line with your pet. If your cat is the type who wriggles and tries to get out of your embrace as it were, uh, make sure that you have a leash, harness, something to keep it in check. You have to go through uh, the wand checking with your cat on you. Once you're through, gather all your stuff, put your cat back in the carrier and then you are expected to go to a police checkpoint which will be just after your security check-in is done. Here you have to uh, show your uh, file and your health certificate to the police um, person in charge. They will enter your pet's details in a register. The details are name of your pet, age of your pet, last date of vaccine, your boarding pass details mm, and yeah that's about it and then you have to sign. Now while this was happening there was a last call for Bombay to Cochin and let me tell you I am extremely proud that I have never in my life missed a flight much less be late for one. This was the first time in my life I was at security when the last call for my flight was being announced. Let me tell you that's not a feeling that you want to experience especially when you have a cat with you. So here I was trying to get to my gate with a cat um, and I had to cross at least 10 gates before I could get to my gate. Again I was extremely happy that the airport was as empty as it was. Uh, I managed to get to the gate in time uh, people were still queuing up, so at least I wasn't, you know, holding up anybody. As soon as I get in line, I show my boarding pass, I um, get through, and then you're onward into the flight. Once you're in the flight, you are only allotted the last row in the flight. Uh, whether it's business class or economy, you're going to be in the last row. So. Because I knew of this, while I was booking my ticket, I had chosen the last uh, row voluntarily and the window seat, you do not get the aisle seat, you cannot hinder your co-passengers with your bag and your pet, so you are supposed to take the window seat. So I had chosen the window seat in the last row by myself at, at the time of booking as well as at the time of uh, web check-in 48 hours before I was to travel. Now I headed straight to my uh, row, but again, because such is the time I was the only passenger in my row there's no one else traveling with me um, and even though I had the luxury of keeping um, the bag on the seat next to me I had no such luck because madam was not having it I had to keep her on my lap there was no other go and uh, we took off almost immediately after I had uh, like within 10 or 15 minutes of me having sat down uh, all social distancing norms were being followed I was given the aisle seat the passenger in front of me was on the window seat and so on and so forth so now once the flight took off uh, Tofu was not happy she was yowling every 30 seconds or so it is not particularly loud considering babies are much louder on flights but uh, it was still distressing to me especially um, because I did not know how to comfort her and she kept uh, moving you know in circles within her bag and um, finally the only thing I could figure out to do was to stick my hand into the bag and keep petting her and that sort of comforted her 
I had to make sure that the zips were tight around my hand because if she saw even the slightest opening, she would try to get out. And you do not want that. You do not want um, a cat shooting off to the front of the aircraft. Trust me, that's not something you want to deal with. So throughout the flight, um, at least for the first hour of the flight, she would meow every 30 seconds. And because I was at the last row, I was right in front of the loose. So every time someone went to use the loo, she would meow, meow, <laughs> hoping that someone would let her out of the bag. But that was not to be. I think about an hour and a half into the flight, which is pretty much like most of the flight, she was meowing. Uh, she settled down about half an hour prior to landing. Uh, and by settle down, I mean she uh, stopped yowling. She still continued to move around my hand. She would sit down and 10 seconds later, she'd get up and sit down here. 10 seconds later, she'd get up and sit down here. But at least she was quiet. She would lick my hand every now and then, which almost was a way of her saying, I'm okay, I'll be fine. Uh, so expect this or worse or probably less because it's an experience that your pet has never had before. The sound of the engines, the sound of an aircraft in general is going to be distressing for your cat. So make yourself mentally prepared for this. As soon as we landed, I could sense that uh, she was okay. Like as soon as the, the aircraft came to a stop, um, even her tremors had stopped. Oh yeah, she had tremors throughout the flight. So expect that as well. Uh, but I could see that she had stopped her trembling as soon as the flight came to a full stop. The sound, the very oppressive sound that we are all used to, but they are not, was no longer there and she was fine. After that, she was quiet. Uh, once I stepped out of the flight, it was um, pretty much uh, okay. I had to uh, go onward because my hometown is actually Trivandrum and not Kochi. And I had to fly to Kochi because there were no direct flights to Trivandrum. I had to get into a cab for another four hour trip with Tofu. Uh, luckily for me, she is quite uh, comfortable in a car and during road trips. So that was not something that I was too concerned about. And um, she was fine through the car trip. In fact, as soon as we got into the car, I let her out of the bag. Uh, what she tends to do is find her lap sit down and snooze and that's exactly what she did for half the journey she snoozed on my lap and for the remaining half of the journey she voluntarily went into her bag and slept um, four hours later we were in Trivandrum and here I am quarantining in this flat opposite my parents flat for 14 days and there is the little munchkin <laughs> So that was my entire trip with a cat. I have also written a detailed description on my blog, the link for which I will post in the description below. Um, feel free to ask me anything in the comment section. I hope I haven't missed out anything. I've pretty much covered all that I could think of. Um, I hope this gives you the um, confidence you need to travel with your pet after four months of uh, being holed up in Bombay and uh, not being able to come back home because I could not bear the thought of leaving my cat with someone else um, in Bombay and with no way of knowing when I would be able to go back to Bombay so as soon as I figured out that I could travel with Tofu I did everything I could so that I could fly with her. If you um, were here to figure out how to fly with your pet, this is where the video comes to an end. That is all I have in terms of information. I want to also take this opportunity to say a few more things um, that is not pertaining to flying with your pet. So uh, feel free to leave here. If you're still here, I am doing this because of something that I noticed during this entire enterprise. 
so when i was figuring out how i am to fly with tofu i had put out a tweet and a twitter user by the handle irreverent underscore by uh, parul soni came to my rescue uh, and she gave me very comprehensive set of instructions instructions that she had found out from a friend who had flown with their cat um, in june so um, she was the reason that i garnered the courage to actually go through with this so parul thank you i'm taking this opportunity to thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the help that you gave me as you can see i have braces and um, i'm a 31 year old woman with braces and i chose the wrongest possible time to get them i literally got my first set of braces um in march a week before the first grand lockdown started so even though i was supposed to have this only for 6 months um that is clearly delayed now um i had to get my second set a week before i flew and while i i was at the dentist was the first time i made this observation that my dentist a woman her assistant a woman and me well a woman here we were three women three women just doing what needed to be done the day before i was to fly and to get my uh, certificate for tofu i could not uh, get it from my regular vet because it was a sunday and he wasn't available on sunday so again thanks to parul i was able to get uh, a certificate via dr anushka from happy tales in bombay again thank you so much dr anushka you have no idea what it means to me uh, for you to accommodate me at the very last minute and give me a health certificate for tofu when you did another woman just doing her job um came to my rescue my flight my captain and the first officer both women captain seema sharma i don't know if you'll ever see this but um, you have no idea what your one little approval meant for me and tofu thank you so much uh, this is for you and the crew also all female crew um, i think the head uh, head of cabin crew was called sukhvinder i could be wrong i'm really sorry if i am but thank you uh, for being such amazing human beings and thank you particularly to that one um air hostess who came and checked up on me and asked me if tofu was fine thank you that meant so much to me i wish i could see you better i don't even know if i would ever recognize you if i saw you in public because you were fully covered in you know ppe gear thank you for all that you're doing every one of you um so basically this is just a a sort of side note about how through this entire <laughs> production every step of the way women came to my rescue and um thank you ladies for everything that you're doing despite these horrible circumstances you helped a woman and her baby girl fly in the worst of times back to their hometown and uh, all the very best to each and every one of you and for anyone else watching stay safe and uh, yeah all the best